We've learned a lot of the basics about anti-differentiation. Let's use what we've learned so far to work out a couple of examples. For our first example, we'll start off again a little bit on the easier side. Let's find an antiderivative for the function f of x is equal to 3 times e to the power 2x plus 1 plus the sine of x. Alright, so I want to find the antiderivative, 3e e to the 2x plus 1 plus the sine of x dx. What am I going to get here? Well, the 3 is constant, so I don't have to really worry about that. And then here I have e to the power 2x plus 1. So we recall that the antiderivative of some function to the ax plus b was equal to 1 over a times the antiderivative of that function at ax plus b plus our constant, right? So here I have e as my function to the 2x plus 1, so a is 2 and b is 1. So what am I going to do is say I know the antiderivative for e to the x, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to plug in ax plus b and I'm going to divide by this coefficient uh, a. So I divide by 2, which is my a, right, and then I have e to the 2x plus 1. That's the antiderivative of e to the 2x plus 1 multiplying by this one half, right? Then I add on the sum of the anti, the antiderivative of the sum is the sum of the antiderivatives, and the antiderivative of sine x is equal to negative cosine x plus c. So cleaning this up a little bit, I have three halves, e to the 2x plus 1 minus cosine x plus c. We check our work by differentiating, so I have three halves. <coughs> the derivative of e to the 2x plus 1 is e to the 2x plus 1 times, using the chain rule, the derivative of the inside function, that's 2. And I have minus, the derivative of cosine is minus sine x, and the derivative of c is 0. So cleaning this up, this 2 and this 2 cancel, so I have 3e to the 2x plus 1. P my 2 negatives is a plus, and I have plus sine x, which is, a, again, my original function. For our second example, we make it a little more complicated. Let's find an antiderivative for the function f of x is equal to 1 over 2x minus the log of 2x. So we want to recall, well, first let's make a note. We had better take x bigger than 0 if we want this function to be defined. <clears throat> so that'll simplify our derivative, our antiderivative of 1 over 2x a little bit. Um, we also want to recall that the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log, or just log, of the absolute value of x plus c, which in our case is the natural log of just x, because x is always positive, plus c. We also know the antiderivative of the log or natural log function, <coughs> log of x dx, and what we get is x times the natural log of x minus x plus c, right? So we've seen this antiderivative in a different video, and so we're going to use both of these things in this case to calculate the antiderivative, right? So then in our case, the antiderivative of 1 over 2x minus the log of 2x, log or natural log, same thing, dx, <coughs> so this log, this natural log, same thing, is, well, sum, the antiderivative of a sum is the sum of the antiderivatives, so I can treat these two things separately. This, I could also write as 1 half times 1 over x, right, so 1 half times 1 over x. And so the 1 half is a constant, and so then I just use the antiderivative of 1 over x, which in our case is natural log or log of x. Then I subtract, and what I want here, I have again the case of f of ax plus b, right? Except in this case, the a is 2, like we had last time, but now the b is 1. Well, there's no b in this formula anyway, so I don't really have to worry about that. Right? I guess there's a b here, but as long as I'm not multiplying or dividing by b, so <coughs> no big deal. So what I do is I multiply by 1 over a, so that's 1 over 2, and then I use the antiderivative of just the log function, except instead of x, I plug in 2x. So 1 half times 2x log of 2x 
minus 2x, and then all of this has our friendly plus c. Let's clean this up a little bit. So I have 1 half log x. Here I could distribute this 1 half really and get minus x log 2x. And then here I have minus 1 half times a minus 2x, which is really plus x plus c. Right, then again we could check our work by differentiating. So 1 half log x, I differentiate and I get 1 half times 1 over x, which is 1 over 2x. And then here I have to use the product rule. I get the log of 2x plus x times the derivative of log 2x is 1 over 2x times the derivative of the inside function, that's 2, <coughs> plus the derivative of x is 1. And then the derivative of c is 0. So what do I get? Well, I get 1 over 2x <coughs> minus, well, I have log of 2x, and then here I have an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator, a 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. So what I really have is minus 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 2x minus the log of 2x, which is, in fact, the function that I started with. For our third and final example, let's find an antiderivative for f of x is equal to 14x to the 6th power minus cosine of 18x minus 20 plus 2. So, <clears throat> I take the antiderivative of 14x to the 6th minus the cosine of 18x minus 20 plus 2. What do I get? Well, 14x to the 6th, we've done dealt with that before. I get 14 times 1 7th x to the 7th power. <clears throat> That's not so bad. Next, I have to figure out what I'm doing about cosine of 18x minus 20, and this is again one of our ax plus b situations. So I divide by 18, because that's my a. And then the antiderivative of cosine, well, let's think about this for a second. The derivative of sine is cosine, so the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So I get sine of 18x minus 20. The antiderivative of 2 is 2x, and then we have our usual and friendly plus c. It's really easy to forget that you're anti-differentiating when it comes to the constant and just take it away. Don't do it. Make sure you anti-differentiate instead of differentiate. So we can clean this up a little bit. One four, 14 times 1 7th is just 2. So I have 2x to the 7th minus 1 18th times the sine of 18x minus 20 plus 2x plus our constant. And then like example three in <coughs> the other examples video, I will leave this one for you to check yourself. The important thing that we have talked about during this video is using that f of ax plus b idea that we talked about in a different video. So that's giving us this coefficient like the 1 eight over 18 that we have here. right? And as long as I know the antiderivative of the thing that I'm trying to anti-differentiate, then this ax plus b stuff on the inside is not tripping me up at all. Again, I hope these problems have helped you feel a little bit more confident about what you're doing with antiderivatives. Practice is so important for these problems. So make sure you do some, let us know if you're having questions, and good luck.